It's the San Jose Giants pregame show here in Stockton tonight, getting ready for the Giants and the Ports. I'm Joe Rizzo, joined now by a special guest, San Jose Giants pitching coach, Dan Runzler. And Dan, uh, thanks for taking the time to join me here today. And your return to the organization here in, in 2022 after a, a great run as a player. And I know you were coaching at other levels, uh, other organizations the past few seasons, but what's it been like to be back here with the Giants? It's uh, it's It's been a homecoming of sorts. I'm very fortunate to come back home to a, to a degree. I mean, this is an organization that drafted me, uh, gave me a chance to grow as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a player, everything like that. So I couldn't be happier to be here. And you, of course, were a pitcher in San Jose on perhaps the greatest San Jose Giants team of all time. They, they have the record for wins still, 2009, won a championship. What a year that was for you because you went from San Jose to San Francisco in the same season. This must bring back some memories about what that year meant to you. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really great to, to look at all the guys who I played with throughout that. I mean, I was here for, I think, six or eight weeks, and just uh, to be able to have a part of the rich San Jose history, is uh, I'm just proud to be part of it. You were on two championship teams in San Francisco, 2010, 2012. Tell us about the uh, reunion you had a few uh, weeks ago with the 2012 group. It's the same thing. I mean, we remember the wins a lot, but we more more importantly, um, it's the friendships and, and everything else we build. And um, seeing those guys, a lot of those guys I haven't seen since 2012. Some guys I've seen uh, more frequently, but it's it's been something that's... Uh, it was just a it was a great situation to go along there and, and just have have a great time seeing the guys again, reminiscing, seeing where they're at in their lives, and just knowing that we have that one thing together, which is uh, something pretty special. Mm -hmm. Visiting with Dan Runzler here on the San Jose Giants pregame show, and there were a lot of expectations. There was a lot of hype with this San Jose staff coming into the year, all the draft picks from a year ago, others also coming up from the Complex League. Leading the league in just about every pitching category as you kind of look big picture and all the pitchers you've had this year, do you feel like it's been a successful season? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, all the expectations for right reasons um, with the guys we were coming in, and for me too, just getting to know these guys. But um, it's been... Uh, um, it's been a phenomenal journey so far. I know we still got some time left, and um, I got a great confidence in these guys from the beginning to now. And it's just been an absolutely phenomenal job getting to know these guys and work with these guys and see them grow as, as individuals and as pitchers has been uh, really, really good for me. Uh, there are so many great stories on this San Jose staff, and we'll get into some of these individually here as we go. But uh, top of the list, or top of mind, are there, are there some that, that really kind of stand out, whether it be maybe with the dramatic improvement they've shown from day one or, or maybe just some stories, some years maybe we didn't all see coming? Yeah, I mean, there's a few that come to mind quickly. Um, Trevor McDonald's a big one for me coming in here. I didn't know much about his background. I just know that he came in as a bullpen guy, then became a piggyback guy, and then became – one of the best starters in the league. Um, and that's a testament to him and the hard work he's put in. Uh, a guy like Nick Sinicola has been just phenomenal from start to finish, being a piggyback guy, then taking the starts by himself, leading the league in a lot of stuff. Um, Manuel Mercedes has been a big, big shining spot as far as what he looked like from the beginning to now. Eric Silva at 19, both those Mercedes and Silva at 19 years old, being able to carry the, the weight like that, understand who they are and just improve. And it's just the, the tireless work ethic and the teammates that they are and the people that they are have just been phenomenal. I can go on and on because uh, I don't want to leave anybody else out because everyone who's been here and gone up or anywhere else has been just, uh, it's a blessing for me to be a part of this. All right, let's talk about some of those guys you just mentioned. Trevor McDonald, who just got moved up this week uh, to uh, Eugene, a, a great year, ERA around two and a half, not many hits allowed. What was the big deal for him this year? Because it was just a massive step forward, a big breakout season, things that he was working on that allowed him to, to really take this big jump forward. I think personally it's just, or for him, it's just him gaining confidence in his stuff and attacking the zone with his pitches. And he has gained confidence and he has been great about trying to be great with his stuff in his zones, uh, whether it's just the fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. For a guy with four pitches, five if you count the four seam with the two seam, it's just um, he has an absolute arsenal and he's been able to use it to his degree and, and be really good about like exposing hitters and also being – It's just for me it's the confidence in throwing his stuff and being confident in attacking the zone. How about with uh, Eric Silva? What 
jumps out to you about his year because he was pitching to high school hitters at this time a year ago and how he gets thrust into a rotation spot in the California League and I know you've been impressed with with the big leap that he's made this season and I think it's a big thing for him too just the uh, the maturity level that he's come with like at high school like that's a big jump from high school to here and being probably the best kid in his area or in high school in general and being able to understand that 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 you're not pitching to high school guys, you're hitting, you're pitching to pro guys now. And he has really taken a step forward maturity wise more than anything. The stuff's always there, but he's willing to learn. He's talking to some of our older pitchers who are out of college, uh, draft guys. And um, the maturity level for me, his willingness to learn and just the person he is like going forward. I have uh, big aspirations for him. I know he knows I'm in his corner. I'm in his corner no matter what, but he has really learned himself, and he's learning how to get better every day, and he doesn't take that for granted. You mentioned the other 19-year-old pitcher on the staff, Manuel Mercedes. Very different background, of course, to Silva, international signee. Uh, probably hurt by the fact there was no 2020 season, so I mean, he's just seemingly starting to scratch the surface. Is there a pitcher that's, that's more improved from where he was at in April to May to where he is here in late August? I mean, you said it, Joe. Like, watching him in April, like, probably pitching in front of fans for the first time ever and he was just bright-eyed and just a little bit nervous didn't trust his stuff and now he's starting to trust his stuff know what he wants to do his stuff is elite it's big league stuff it's just um, him building the confidence in himself I tell him every day that there's something in there and, and I see it and everyone else sees it but he's actually taking it in his his work ethic the way he is in the weight room during his catch play he's always trying to improve and he's been one of my most uh, my most favorite things to watch this year for sure here on the San Jose Giants pregame show before the Giants and the Stockton Ports tonight, Joe Rizzo visiting with Giants pitching coach Dan Runsler. And Dan, this was a question I asked Travis Ishikawa on the hitting side a couple of weeks ago, but generally speaking, with pitchers at this level, are there you know, boxes you'd like these guys to check? I know everyone's got their own thing that they're working on, but are there things where, hey, we really want you to be able to do this before maybe you move up to a higher level and have success there? It's the plan I think we all as an organization put in place for what they do well and then just them executing. So just being falling in love with the plan, falling in love with the routine, and being able to confidently execute a plan, not having to think on the mound as much. It's just being like, these are the zones I go to with these pitches for these sided hitters. And I think that's something that's really like coming to fruition here for the guys who've been here. I don't have many left, but the guys who've been here as long as they have been, um, they're really trusting their stuff in their zones. And it's just, it's based off pure execution and then being confident in what they do and being okay with that. How do you think the guys handled the piggyback system this year? Very unusual with so many starters and so much depth. Good problem to have, but but a different situation. I think it was great for the for the guys, especially a lot of these guys, their first full season, um, making sure that we get their innings up but not give them too much, but also kind of introduce them into pro ball and letting them go out there and let it rip for four or five innings at a time, depending on – but knowing that there's somebody there behind him helped. But also just them knowing that – they're all starters in our minds. Like it just so happens that we didn't have that many starting positions available. So like eventually like all these guys have, the majority of them have started as piggybacks and gotten their starts. And it's just, it's a testament to them and their work ethic and knowing that what we said was true and that they were all starters. And there, there's something in there to be able to turn a lineup over two or three times is a big, big factor in this game. And that they should be able to be confident in their stuff to be able to do that. One of the pitchers that's thrived in that piggyback role all season has been Seth Lonsway, uh, whether he'd be starting or pitching out of the bullpen. I mean, when his stuff is on, I think just about as unhittable as anyone in the league this year. Yeah, you said it. It's, it's, it's really impressive to watch, um, and especially his growth, too, just knowing what he wants to do. But, yeah, I mean, uh, the curveball, the two-seam, the changeup, and the cutter, like, it's just – there's something, there's something great there, and um, he's taken it in stride. And all these guys, there hasn't been anybody who's been in the piggyback role or not who, hasn't, who has complained or anything like that. So it's just been them knowing what they're going to do when I hand them the ball and when Lipso takes it away from them. That's all they're supposed to do is just go out there and throw until the ball's taken from them, and, they, and they've taken that the entire way. Want to give the bullpen a little bit of love in terms of your true relievers out there, uh, back end of the pen, and a Jose Cruz breakout year for him. Uh, it's not just the fastball. Boy, that changeup that he features, it, it could be a real special pitch. Yeah, I'm happy you brought him up because he's been a guy that I've been had my eyes on since the beginning. And um, his fastball changeup, he's even actually throwing a slider now. Uh, his mound presence is off the charts. Like He's got the slowest heartbeat out there. And 
there's no situation he can't get himself in or get himself out of. And um, he's a luxury to have in the back end, knowing that when he comes in, if we lose a game, it's uh, with the guy on the mound that we want to, to lose the game with. But it's 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 very rarely going to happen. It's happened so very rarely happened so far. But uh, he has just been an absolute pleasure to have here, and um, watching him grow too, and his confidence and his stuff is just off the charts. Visiting with Dan Runzler on the pregame show. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about some of the guys that aren't here anymore, the, the great success stories of, of players that are already up in Eugene or even up in Richmond already. Mm-hmm. And one of those guys in double-A, uh, Landon Roop, I, I, maybe someone that was flying under the radar at the beginning of the year. And I know you said, hey, this guy's got the curveball that could really take him to, to great heights. And we're seeing that the way he's pitching in double A right now. Yeah, I mean, to, to start low A and get to double A is, is a big testament to him and just him executing. But also to just <laughs> the way he goes about his business and he's tireless. He gets upset with himself so much more. He's so much harder on himself than anyone else can be. But uh, for me, watching him go about it, I still am in contact with him, and I'm watching him every time he takes the mound, him and Keaton Wynn up there, and even all the other guys that are in Eugene. It's just it's fun for me to sit there and watch these guys go about their business and be professionals on and off the field. And your first starting pitcher that went up way back in May, I mean, he may have been the top starting arm in this league the first six or so weeks was Mason Black, and and he's had a great first uh, full year. I know you're really excited about what might be ahead for him. Yeah, I mean, there, I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, he's very cerebral, um, but he's also in in contact with himself, with his body, and what he's trying to do. So the, the compete gene comes out after he gets away from the analytical side. So... He's, uh, he's very smart, he's very competitive in nature, and um, he's just, uh, he's been one of the, like I said, there's been so many shining stars here, and I'm just happy to be able to have the chance to coach him. Well, we could have talked for hours about every single one of these pitchers. Uh, it's been a great story. Finally, this stretch run, you're getting a chance to work with five new arms, guys that were just drafted last month, and, and it stands to reason they could be big parts of this team next year. But you're going to give him some chances here down the stretch. What are you hoping to, to get? What are you hoping to see out of these pitchers that I know you're still trying to learn as they get thrown into a playoff race here late in the year? Yeah, well, I'm trying to get to know their names a little bit right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like uh, the reason they sent them here is because they think that they're ready for this level. And I, I trust the Giants organization fully. And while they're here, I just, I'm, I'm going to be a lot of hands off. I'm just going to help them a little bit while I can. But I want them to go out there and just compete and be the pitchers that they are that they got drafted and the reason why they're here and they're going to be a big piece for us moving forward and I have I have a lot of high hopes for them as we get going throughout the the rest of the season and hopefully into the postseason all right Dan really appreciate the time and uh, the insight and all the best here down the stretch thanks for having me Joe all right that's Giants pitching coach Dan Runsler our guest on the pregame show tonight Giants baseball in Stockton is coming up next